In high school, I played, I played basketball all four years for Central Catholic um, in Bloomington, Illinois. I also played on the AAU circuit um, pretty much all four years as well for just a local team in Central Illinois. The reason I, I kind of got into the program as a freshman, I knew one of the previous head managers who also went to my high school. Uh, yeah, Schmidt, I mean, he's a great player, man. I mean, uh, he played in high school. And, uh, He'd be smacking them when we out here in practice. So. <laughs> the coaches always joked about like, oh, you want to walk on next year? Coach Gross yelled at me, asking what year I was. I replied, senior. I thought he was kidding. He comes down, he says, Ryan, uh, I'm expecting you to, to suit up against, at that point it was Purdue, but it turns out it would be Minnesota. It's kind of funny because uh, we always knew him, know him as a manager. And now that he's in the locker room, it's kind of funny. But, I mean, we're happy to have him on our roster. It happened so quickly, I can't even imagine what it's going to feel like, but I'm definitely going to cherish it, and it'll be a, it'll be a life-changing experience. Marcus Jackson is courtside. They would have some confidence going in, you would think. Yeah, I think so. This is a tough place to play. You know, the, they got that student section right there under one basket, the barn. They dress like farm animals and all that, but for whatever reason, they've been able to come here and had a couple of really impressive wins. The one two years ago, the game right after they beat Indiana, I thought might have been the most important game of the season for them. These guys, uh, for whatever reason, they like playing in here, so we'll see if that continues today. Everybody's got to put 100% effort all the time. And once you get that, then the other stuff can take care of itself. Making sure that you're there for one another, you're looking to your left and looking to your right, make sure you take care of each other. For the seniors, I mean, it's our last go around. Just give it all we got, have no regrets. set to go. The official to toss it in the air. It'll be Maurice Walker at 6'10", Nana Angu at 6'11", and the Illini win the tap, and this one is underway. Fighting Illini used the space the Minnesota zone gave them to hit five first-half three-pointers. They carried the momentum into the second half and led 41-38 with 15 minutes remaining. The Gophers, however, would answer with a 15-2 run, which would be too much to overcome. After playing three games in less than a week, the Illini were ready for a much needed week off. Illinois will be three and five with a week off. Minnesota goes to two and six in league play. Next up, Illinois will play Penn State a week from the day at noon at State Farm Center. Ryan Schmidt wasn't the only member of the Fighting Illini basketball program to receive some good news in January. Junior walk-on Mike Latulip learned he would receive a scholarship for the spring semester. Well, it's funny, uh, after, it was after the Northwestern game and before the Indiana game, I believe, and uh, just, well, I was just shooting around at practice, right before practice, and uh, Coach Gross came up to me, like, pulled me aside, and at first he talked about the Northwestern game, uh, you know, told me some things here and there about the game, and then, like, the second part of the conversation was like, oh, yeah, and by the way, we're going to put you on scholarship. And I don't even think I let him finish the sentence before I started bear-hugging him pretty aggressively, and, uh, you know, it was just, at that moment, I was just like, Wow, you know, that's something that, that was a goal for me since I came in here. And uh, to be able to, you know, have Coach say that and shake his hand, hug him, and it was just, uh, it was a blessing. On the break, three on two. Latula lines it up for three, and he got another one for the right wing. I just tried to work hard every day, and, you know, it sounds cliche, but, you know, if you keep the right attitude and you immerse yourself in the team's goals first, then all your individual goals will come back to you. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Finding Illini Game Day courtside here at the uh, State Farm Center. As we get set for the ball game today, the Illini and the Penn State Nittany Lions, which will tip shortly after noon. Toss of the ball, tap in the air, and the Illini have it as Tate will handle it to Starks, who's in for Hill. Let's lose with a three, and he buried it. First lead of the day. Here is Hill. Pull up, crossover, buried it from two. More on the stuff home. Here's Nunn, shoots a three on a pass from Tate, and he buried it. Starks, though, picks it up, fires a three, and he got it. Now to Hill, who will shoot a three, and he buried it. Bounce pass to Morgan, open from 10, and he buried it. Jalen to the basket, layup, missed it, followed by Morgan, won't go. Followed by Colbert, is good! Illinois and Penn State played back and forth for 40 minutes, with the lead changing hands 16 times. Illinois' defense was effective against the Nittany Lions, forcing 19 turnovers and nine steals. Sophomore Malcolm Hill had perhaps his best game as an Illini, leading the team with 27 points, so it only made sense that with the game on the line, he had the ball in his hands. 
Tied at 58, Illinois and Penn State. Who's going to be the hero today? Here is Tate with 12. Shot clock off with 10. Hill out near midcourt. Drives with six down the lane. Malcolm with the shot. It's up and good. Malcolm Hill scores it for Illinois to give them the lead. He's got 27. Here is Newbill. Inbounds. Gets it back for Thorpe. Newbill driving down court with one to the basket for the layup. He missed it. And the Illini have won it. And the Illini have literally escaped for Pitt State. 60 to 58. Great job of continuing to dominate home court. Put you at 10-1 at home. We got the stops at the end when we need them. And there's something to be said for that, guys. We can obviously play better than we played today. I'm confident we will. And everybody contributes. That's a win by all 16 guys right there. The story of a manager earning a spot on the roster exploded in the media. But for the Illinois basketball managers, also known as the Swarm Squad, it was a tough blow. We've had to adjust and we've done what we can and uh, you know we're, we're trying to make sure that our offense stays intact and uh, uh, that we keep rolling off and, and getting some dubs. Collectively as a group we're bummed. Yes, obviously he's our best player, but we are so proud of him and uh, as uh, Adam Metzger, you know, last year's head manager, we, we have all uh, concluded that Ryan Schmidt is now in the Manager Hall of Fame. The day that he got promoted up to the team, he sent us all a text and saying that he's a manager at heart and if we need anything uh, that you know, he'd be there to help us out. They do a lot of little things that a lot of people don't really notice or appreciate and I appreciate it. I mean, my, my freshman year, you know, there was five of us coming in, I was the odd guy out. I had a manager as my roommate. As a group, the managers are responsible for literally everything that you can think of and not think of behind the scenes. Um, our job is basically to do everything to make sure that the coaches don't notice something's wrong. That starts in warm-ups, we're out there, you know, getting a good sweat up and rebounding and uh, passing and, uh, you know, continues all the way into just getting the bench set up. Uh, all the players are getting their water, towels. I've always loved basketball, but I, I didn't figure that, like, players would become best friends and like coaches would be so nice to us and know all of our names and like treat us as, as, as one and, and that's, that's really cool that, that uh, they, they shared how, how much they appreciate all that we do because we really do, really do a lot, a little bit of everything behind the scenes. That's, that's, that's really cool. You know, that's why we're here because we want to be around the game because, um, you know, we want to see our team win and have more of an impact than just sitting up in the stands. Illinois headed into the matchup against Rutgers, looking to get back to 500 in Big Ten play. The game remained tight for the first 13 minutes. The Fighting Illini trailed 20-19 before going on a 28-10 run to take control of the game. Kendrick Nunn led the Illini with 21 points as Illinois evened its Big Ten record at 5-5. 66-54, Illinois over Rutgers. I'm proud of you guys, man. Proud of you. Sitting at 5-5. Five and five. Uh, did a good job of, of uh, dominating home court here with these two, two game homestand. Now we're going back on the road, we get a chance to be road warriors. Okay, we get a chance to see if we've learned through these 23 games what we got to have for 40 minutes on Saturday at 11 a.m. in East Lansing when that ball gets. Good morning once again, everybody, and welcome to Fighting Illini Game Day. Illinois on the road today to take on the Michigan State Spartans up at the Breslin Center in East Lansing. This overall series over the years knotted up at 57 apiece. The Illini won in East Lansing last year. They'll try to do it again today. It just seems to me like the home team is winning an awful lot of games lately in the Big Ten. I think I saw a stat the other day. I might be a little bit off on this by a couple of points, but I think it's like 72 or 73 percent of, of the home, of games are, are won by home teams in the Big Ten. And for whatever reason, teams play better at home. I don't know if it's the crowd, the energy they get. I'm sure that's part of it. Officials might get into that a little bit and, and give a favorable whistle to the home team in, in, a, in a crucial moment. As we get ready for the start of this one from the end zone in East Lansing. Lob inside to Egwu, guarded by Costello. Turnaround jumper is good for Nana Egwu. Throws it out top to Dunn. Left wing to Hill for three. And he got it. 
starts, top of the key. Shoots a long, long three. In and out, no good. Rebound underneath. Inglou took it away from Schilling. None. Dribble drive over Costello. Flips it up to the rim and it goes in. Top of the key, Nair. Drops it off to Forbes. Top of the key for three. Got it. Malcolm Hill drives on Valentine from the left baseline. Flinks it up towards the rim and it goes in. Now to Malcolm Hill. Hill with a dribble with the left hand. Pull out from 15. They can't stop it. Are you serious? He buried another one. Left corner, passed on the three. Lob inside to Dawson. And Dawson on the lob finishes. He has six. 34-34 tie. Timeout, Illinois. None. Out top to Egwu. Fires the three left wing and he got it. Payne around a pick starts. Right wing three is good. Come on, starts. Malcolm, drive, pull up from 17 is no good. Rebound, Fulmer, oh, oh. coming in wow. on the weak side. Cross <laughs> court, Trice, left wing three is good. His first three of the game. Timeout, Michigan State, 17 to shoot, a minute one to go. None, drives, none, short jumper, oh. good. With the Illini leading 55 to 52 with under a minute to play and Michigan State's Travis Trice at the line, the game took a bizarre turn. Illinois' Jalen Tate was assessed a controversial technical foul for boxing out Trice on the first of his two free throws. It's not like he moped around about it. He just told us, you guys are without me now. We've got to get the job done and close it. Man, I think that shows great leadership on his part. The Spartans would miss two of the next three, giving the Illini a chance to win the game on defense. Right wing, guarded by Colbert, bangs into him, nearly traveled, throws up an off-balance shot, he missed it. Malcolm Hill grabs the rebound, and he is fouled. Inbound to Trice with 10. Trice at the top of the key. A three will tie it. Trice gets a pick, shoots a three over Egglu, he airballs it. Rebound underneath Malcolm Hill, and he's pushed out of bounds with 2.3 seconds left. Free throw for Malcolm Hill to seal it, and he got it. That's it. And the Illini steal one again from the Spartans in East Lansing. 59-54, the Illini win it. Folks, unbelievable. We've had to overcome stuff all year, whether it's injuries, etc. At the end of the day, I looked at that man, I said, we've overcome all year. We gotta find a way. And you found a way, man. That's what we gotta have the rest of the year. That is the standard. Now the bar's been set high, and we've gotta continue that. All right, Manny, you got it. One, two, three. All for one, one for all. One, two, three. Finish. Finish. No, man, it was Momo! <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, you're firing us, Nobo. <laughs> Plenty to talk about in this one for sure, both on the courts, a whole lot of strange stuff happening down the stretch in this game here today, and let's get right to it here on the post-game show. First up, we go to Vicki here in Champaign. Good afternoon, Vicki. I just wanted to um, get in on one of the first callers and tell the guys how happy I am for them, what a great game, and also to Coach Gross and the other assistant coaches. That was just awesome. I love the way that they have have played, especially, you know, since the other guys have been hurt. So congratulations. Great job. Last April, the entire University of Illinois Athletic Department participated in a Nike rebrand. Illinois unveiled three new basketball uniforms at the event. Yeah, I mean, they're great. Uh, and they're amazing. They're really fun. Uh, it's really good. For us to play in them. I think the new, new uniforms are great. Uh, I'm glad I'm be able to. I was able to wear them. The Fighting Illini also revealed a gray uniform during their trip to Madison Square Garden, and a Flying Illini throwback version for their bragging rights game against Missouri. Favorite one was uh, the one when we played Villanova. The gray ones. I Man, it's just something different. I Man, I'm not gonna say it's simple, but I'm kind of like, I'm not really big on the fashion, but I, I, I like the jerseys a lot. It's simple gray. Man, I wish we could wear it again. I hope we wear it again sometime soon. I like the uh, orange uniforms and uh, the throwbacks. I really love the, uh, the final line I, uh, uniform. I think those were the best ones. And, and then I think uh, the gray ones you know, come in second. And then I, like, I really do like our away blue uniforms. I think those are really nice. I think those, those are my top three, the uh, final line I, the gray ones, and the blue ones. 
Assistant Equipment Manager Kyle Croy is in charge of getting the uniforms ready for the squad to wear on game day. The uniform usually ultimately coaches make coach makes the final decision on that. But myself, Mark Morris, Rod Cardinal all kind of have input. We're kind of unique that we have a third uniform. You know, we have white at home, maybe on the road, and then we have orange that we can wear home or away. Um, a lot of that has to depend on who we're playing. If we're at home and playing in Indiana, or Wisconsin, a Nebraska red team, we have to wear the white. Um, and then kind of the same on the road. And then rule of thumb is if you win in that jersey, you're probably going to wear it again. So we beat Michigan State in Navy. Come Sunday against Wisconsin, we'll be in Navy. And then this year it's unique. We have uh, two, all, you know, we have a gray jersey and then we have a retro jersey. So we have five total jerseys, which is the first time I think we've ever had that. Right now it's, it's about 1 o'clock on game day. Um, We'll have a shoot around usually you know, five, four hours, four or five hours before the game. So I like to have pretty much everything set up by then. So we're headed over now to set up uh, the game gear for the game tonight and then the practice gear for the shoot around. Uh, we use Big Blue um, to transport from Oven to the State Farm Center. Before the season starts, you kind of get what certain accessories the guys would want. You know, we have lots of options, whether it be a short sleeve shirt underneath their jersey or a sleeveless, or we even have tank tops now. Same with the socks, whether they're like the quarter socks or, or the crew socks. So usually once the, the kinks are worked out the first couple games, we know exactly what they'll have. So after that, it's pretty smooth. Whatever I set in their locker is pretty much what they need. Now, if they were, if they do want something different, you know, we have, you know, usually a box of miscellaneous items over at State Farm Center that you know we can take care of the guys. So ultimately, whatever they're gonna feel the most comfortable in, we're gonna take care of that. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Fighting Illini Game Day. Indeed, we are at courtside here at the State Farm Center, Illinois and Michigan tonight. Sellout crowd. D Brown night, bobblehead night, orange out night. Should be uh, very warm in here. It looks good outside coming in. A crowd of over 17,000 expected. We don't have any official word yet, but it looks like Ravante Rice will play tonight. He is out uh, in the uniform, or at least half the uniform. Marcus, it looks like he'll be uh, in the rotation tonight, which is good news for Illini fans. Yeah, it is. It's been, it's, he missed nine games, so he's back for the first time in a little bit over a month. I know um, he's ready to roll, and I think he's gonna be a pretty big look for the team. Ryan Barnard with Jerry Hester, and I don't know about you, Jerry, but I think the crowd's ready. Oh my for goodness. basketball. <laughs> yes. This place is fired up. See him orange. Back to the rafters here. Record 17,000 plus. It's, it's energy tonight, Brian. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? I may need two feet belt <laughs> Illinois in orange. Michigan in blue. Egwu and Doyle to jump it up. Egwu with a two-inch advantage. Toss in the air, and it's won by Illinois. Monte Rice has returned. Ahmad down low to Black. He got free. Put it up and in. Down low, none to Egwu. Inside the paint, back to Starks for three. He got it. Rebound Doyle on the weak side. Put it up, blocked by Egwu. Egwu with a loose ball. Hands it off to Starks. 12 and a half to go in the half. None, right wing, three is good. None with a three from the right wing. And listen to this crowd. Eight to Dunn, under the basket, Dunn drops to Colbert. Short jumper, go! Oh, yes! Oh, look at Austin Colbert! That's exactly right. Teams are scouting him by Starks, knows that he's going to take going. the three. And he's and got a steal. steal! Going the other way with a layup! Oh, oh. Ahmad Starks with a little 4 0 run, and it's 22 20, just picked his pocket. Right wing up to a Rockman, jump step in the lane, short jumper blocked by Egwu. His fourth block of the game. Illinois down six. Eight and a half left, finds Hale open for three, and he got it. The Wolverines entered State Farm Center playing for their postseason lives. Their effective zone defense and clutch shot making for the majority of the game reflected the sense of urgency. Back to Tate in the paint. Jalen, layup. Good. They let it go. With 313 left, Spike Albrecht hit a jumper that looked to just about seal the road win for Michigan. However, playing in front of the largest crowd in State Farm Center history, the Fighting Illini still had a few punches left. Ravante Rice, his first points in a month and a half. Almost a five count, it is a five count. Good job, Nana Egwu. In the left corner now, gets it from Hill, none, drives, floater in the lane, good! 
Kendrick Nunn with 14, and we got a one possession game. Right corner didn't shoot it. Starks might. Nope, in the corner, Nunn for the tie. And he got oh, it. Oh, yes! Tied at 50. How do you like that? With 4.5 seconds left, the Illinois defense stepped up again, forcing another turnover and giving the Illini a shot to win it in regulation. Got to get it in first to Agwu. Yep. Back to Hill with two, with one, go. for the win from yep. midcourt. And we go. Let's go! It almost went in. Oh, oh, it hit the rim. After roaring back to force overtime, the Illini continued to roll in the extra session. Lob to Agwu. Nana. Yet to score tonight against BFL. Turn around, jumper, it's good! Oh, the big man comes Man alive. Agwu with his first two of the game. Albrecht, bad pass, go Who is Agwu. it? Ahead to Starks for the layup, it is good! Ten point Illinois lead. Rice to the basket, layup, it's good! Bounce pass inside, Rice had it stripped. Hill gets it back. Five to shoot, short jumper, no good. Egglo! This is unbelievable. The end result was a combined 21 to zero run that allowed Coach Gross to clear his bench with 14 seconds left. Brian Schmidt's gonna check in. Oh! -ho! This. Oh, the cherry on the Sunday. Oh! -ho! He gets in. Tate's gonna dribble it out. Six seconds left. What a win for the Fighting Illini. 64-52 over Michigan. What a game. What How a do you like that? A remarkable start to the game and an amazing finish. Kendrick Nunn on here. Tell us about the last minute, what was going on, and then what you guys did in overtime. You guys went on a 21-0 run there. Yeah, man, we just, we just had to take it on. We had to grind. You know, in overtime, it was a close game. Um, Final man, we have to just take it. Hey, Henry, congratulations. Thanks, All right. nicely done. I've told you guys before we'll just compete like that and we'll let the chips fall. You know, obviously, we're trying to win all of them. You know that. That's what you guys are trying to do. But at the end of the day, our effort was off the chain. I thought we played ridiculously hard. Okay, don't swallow it now. We got work to do.